What's going on there guys? We back with another one and today we got to talk about Jay Williams and his take on Caitlin Clark and all the backlash he's received over the last few weeks when a trigger word he put in there he said he don't feel like Caitlin Clark is great yet and he said he measures you know greatness by championships and that's always kind of been Jay's stance uh, when measuring athletes right but you know, Caitlin Clark, another thing he said in that statement is Caitlin Clark is the Steph Curry of women's college basketball. And if you look at Davidson, Curry was great in college and Davidson never won. And you kind of look at Iowa, even though Iowa was a high major school, you look at the talent around Caitlin Clark and you don't feel like they really have a chance to win now. They got to the championship game with her being on a Steph Curry type run, playing at that Steph Curry Davidson type level, you know, and um, being overmatched. I mean, Caitlin Clark is already a great college player. Uh, now he he compared her to Brianna Stewart, Dana Tarazi. You know, I'll even go back further. You know, you start talking about Cynthia Cooper. I kind of use her, especially since you know the, those Houston Comets dynasties they had back in the day. I use her as like a barometer to measure these guards. And one thing I think Caitlin Clark doesn't get enough credit for is her ability to pass. Like, I think Jay's comments fell under so much scrutiny after what Cheryl Swoop said the other day. But I think her ability to pass and her playing with better talent at the next level, which remains to be seen because she may actually elect to go back to college because the NIL will pay a lot more than her being at the professional level. But without further ado, we're going to listen to what Jay said initially, um, and then him clarifying those remarks, and then we're going to listen to, uh, you know, he, he went live last night, or he put up a video, and he clarified again what he was saying, and he told people to stop race baiting, because he went down there and was shooting around with Angel Reese, so people thought what he was doing was a smear campaign against Caitlin Clark because he's so close with Angel Reese. Let's peep. I think she is the Stephen Curry of women's college basketball. I think she has changed the dynamics of the way the game is played. I think the way she plays, the pizzazz, is like she's probably the most prolific scorer the game of basketball has ever seen. Unmatched. I am, I am unwilling, and maybe it's more the, the Kobe mentorship around me, to say that she is great yet. I think she is the most prolific scorer the game has ever seen. I hold great for the levels of immortality or the pantheon to when you win championships. I'm just, that's just me. So Diane Taurasi, when you win three consecutive championships, two-time national player of the year, it has, to, it has to culminate with the chip. It has to. I mean, Brianna Stewart, if we're talking about GOAT legends of the game, she's won four chips. Four chips, multiple national players of the year. So I'm not saying that she's not at a high, high, high level. But for it to go to the states of immortality, in my opinion, it has to culminate with your team winning a championship. So you stand. First of all, you're standing by your Caitlin Clark comment. From well, we were talking this about we were weekend. talking about greatest, and when I hear people talk about goats, right? For me, like, okay, I'm like, okay, you want to be a goat? Like, fine. Like, there's levels of greatness. You got to win championships to be goats. So when people want to don her as the the greatest, of, I'm like, let's slow down. I've seen Donna Taurasi. I've seen Brianna Stewart. And you can sit there and tell me all day long, well, she's played with other great players. Okay, great. Championships. That's how we measure greatness overall. I I understand what you're saying. I disagree. It's okay. I understand wait, wait, wait. what you're saying. I, I Is think she the greatest of all time? Is Caitlin Clark the greatest she, of all but, time? But to you? I, don't, I don't know that she's the greatest of okay. all time. She's the best offensive player that I've seen. I said that in my comment. I said she's the most prolific scorer the game of basketball potentially has ever seen. Her range is something we have not seen in it's a women's incredible, game. It's incredible, spectacular. Reeves picks up the foul, his third. So, I guess what I'm trying to Where help you to, with here Where is are you trying to help me with? I'm trying to, <laughs> you're saying she's great because it came off as if you're saying she wasn't. Yeah, you're saying she's great. You're yeah, just not great. putting her in the Brady category of the All best time. we've ever yes. seen. And I think that's fair. I think we need to see how this rest of the season plays out. I'm with you on that. Okay. I don't think that it's, it's an outrageous comment like a lot of people felt. Well, based on how you just clarified well, people, it. I think well, that's well, people didn't hear me when I said it's another turnover by Kentucky once again. 
People didn't hear words like prolific. Yeah. People didn't hear words like in order to be in the pantheon or into the levels of immortality. You mean we're just going to clip three seconds of a 30 second comment? That's what happens. That That's really? apparently what happens in the media. So after all the backlash Jay Williams received for those comments, he returned and offered his perspective, you know, off air. And this is what he had to say. So I did the LSU Kentucky game tonight and uh, I got assigned the game and I walk into the gym to watch Kentucky practice and who do I see in the gym shooting around other than Angel Reese. Yo, Angel Reese is cool as hell. That's the homie. Her and I played a game of pig. We talked trash. We took a picture. That's it. By the way, Caitlin Clark is cool as hell. She's the homie. Would have done the same with her. Please stop with all this race baiting shit. Please. Ain't nobody out here trying to do that. It's just hoopers. Now, the comment of great, they're both great, okay? We we're talking about levels of greatness and immortality and in the pantheon of greatness. There are levels to great with chips. That's how I think about it. You think about it differently, fine. But the only thing I'm gonna say is to all you keyboard courageous people that wanna call me a bum or try to make fun of my career, none of y'all could hold me. None of y'all. 90% of y'all didn't even pick up a basketball. You can't even dribble the rock. You can't even shoot. So let's stop being tough guys on the keyboard just because you disagree with somebody doesn't mean you need to call their game a bum when you know that's not the case. Because every game day, I bring these people on the court for them to shoot around and people airball the ball. But these are the same people calling people bums. And I laugh. I'm like, oh, who's really the bum? And it's out of love. I come from a place of love. I don't come from a place of hate. I try to appreciate and enjoy the game and tell you guys how I see it. Some people may not rock with it. That's fine. Don't rock with it. You can turn the channel off. Some people do rock with it. Fine, rock with it too. I'm just here to watch Hoop, to talk about it, to see these young legends in the game making. And I love where the women's game is at right now. And I love where it's going. That's what should be spoken about. That's what should be applauded. And that's what should be appreciated. So I'm gonna tell you all why. What Jay Williams said was good. What Cheryl Swoop said was good. Whether you agree with it or not, all these things are good because it brings more attention to the game. I think Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, they didn't know how special that exchange was during the championship game last year because now with NIL, you know, you're seeing these girls all over social media modeling uh, in, in college and, and they're getting sponsorship deals. They're running their followers up. Angel Reese has a ton of followers. Caitlin Clark's getting her followers up. Um, they're going to bring an attention to the game that it hasn't seen before. And there's been great players before now, but what I'm saying is they're able to amass a fan base with social media and its influence in 2024 in a way they couldn't back in 99, 2000. You know what I'm saying? So I think – Anything that's said about them is going to formulate an opinion and, and differing uh, sides of an argument. And I think that's the media coverage that the women's game need. Um, you know, if you can imagine on Sports Center them getting nearly the coverage, you know, or around the same coverage that the men are getting uh, based on somebody name carrying that type of weight. And I think Caitlin Clark name has the potential to do that. See what Angel Reese is doing. Angel Reese is straight up modeling on her social media. Um, she already said she's not in a rush to get to the league because she's making all this money in college. So she branded herself really well. Hope her game translates to the highest level as well because as long as these two are going at each other or maybe who knows how the WNBA works out, they may end up on the same team at a, at a different time. But if Caitlin can play – at this level, um, I think the women's game will draw more and more interest. You know, people will always be waiting to see what she can do. And like I said, I feel like her ability to pass the ball is understated. She be dropping some dimes. She just has to shoot out of necessity. And I think that's one of the things that Cheryl Swoops didn't get right in her argument 
um, Caitlin has to take some of these difficult shots because the players that she's playing with, they either can't get shots up, they they blow a lot of bunnies by the rim, you know, and she has to set the tone and make them believe they can beat teams that are more talented across the board than them. And she's doing that, I ain't going to say on a nightly basis, but a lot of nights being in a high major conference across the board, talent for talent, um, up and down the roster, Iowa don't have it like that. I do look at her Iowa team as Steph Curry's Davidson team in a lot of ways. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I love this for the women's game. Keep talking about them. Keep offering these opinions. And, you know, the, the beautiful thing about this is, well, let me say this first. I, I kind of hinted at this before I showed the videos, but, Jay Williams said, you know, she don't he don't believe she's great yet. Your greatness can be achieved at the next level. Steph won four titles at the next level. You see what I'm saying? But he was already a great college player now. So you don't have to get your greatness in college. You know, Michael Jordan, he got him one in college and then went on to win six in the league. You know, Kareem, we know about all the winning he did in college, and he got his six, too. Um, you know, a lot a lot of great players don't win, you know, in college. Some people, some males didn't even go to college at a certain time, and they won at the highest level. So, you can, you can be great if you don't win one. You can be a great player. Dominique Wilkins is a great basketball player. You see what I'm saying? Like, nobody can dispute that. Um, so... Yeah, I, I don't get his definition of great. Um, now, champion, that's another thing. But there are some players that never won a championship that's greater than some all-stars that have won a championship. And this is the thing, right? This this will go against Jay's argument. I know I'm kind of getting off the subject here, but we praise parity in the league. We praise guys staying and competing in their own city and not joining up so to keep the balance of the game we can't just measure people by championships or they'll feel the pressure to have to join up and create super teams so like Dominique Wilkins is a person I used before I liked the way that he competed against the Celtics he was overmatched but he was giving it to Bird you know what I'm saying like he Dominique was like that I just use him because he's one of my favorite players. And I just want to show an example of extreme greatness, you know, that never won. But back on Caitlin, man, I, I think um, you're going to have people from Cheryl Swoop's day that feel some sort of way saying she's the greatest ever. It's going to hurt a little bit to hear that about a new player. I also think they feel like sometimes these younger players will benefit from their hard work that they laid the foundation in the game for. That's a natural feeling. I mean, you see it in the men's game all the time, talking about the new players uh, in, in a certain way where they're a bit jealous, you know, because of the contracts that they're getting. But I, I really think Caitlin, man, and um, Angel Reed, some of these other young women, Juju, let's go ahead and throw Juju in there. She'll be a big part of this. It'd be nice if Caitlin and Juju could meet in the tournament at some point, just to see two women whose teams aren't the greatest, but they have those two dogs, you know. And um, I, I, I would like to see them kind of go at it for a little bit because I think if that could become a rivalry in the WNBA, that would be dope, man. But hopefully they could generate much more interest, man, a TV deal, money goes up and – you know, they, they make a whole lot more. So, I, I think the women in the women's game need to look at Caitlin Clark as, like, one of the ones that can elevate their game. I would like for them to have or for her to have her ma magic to her bird, you know, because that race dynamic does play uh, a little bit of, of a factor in rivalries, right? You had bird and magic before you – had Michael Jordan just come knock it out the park. So maybe somebody can be her uh, magic, right? And, um, 
you know, maybe Juju can come in and be that Jordan. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Because the ages work for what I'm saying and everything. You know, so we'll see how Angel Reese pans out. That's her rival kind of by nature right now. So we'll see, man. But I love it for the women's game. I actually enjoy it, but I want to see it go to that next level, man. So these girls don't have to – or these women don't have to go across the water and they can earn their money right here in America. You know what I'm saying? Um, instead of having to play that WNBA season then play the other season across the water, man. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, peace.